Hello! Last time on this channel, we made an orc palisade to defend our camp, but this week we're answering the question, what is that wall defending? My players are taking the four thrones of the Monstrous Kingdom, and I wanted to start with the orcs. So I found this gorgeous rendering by Danielle Calvi on Unreal Engine, and I decided to make my own version. So I 3D printed some ludicrously small skulls. Once I had the skulls good to go, I had to do a lot of thinking around how I wanted the shapes to come together. I wasn't using a build for this, I was just using my inspiration image. So I had to do it all from scratch and think through, okay, how are the arms of the chair going to fit up on the back? Is the seat of the chair going to be, you know, how high, how deep? Do I want the arms to line up in front of or beside? All that kind of minutia, this was that step. Once my planning stage was done, I took my foam that I'd been drawing on over to the Proxon and cut out sort of the general shapes I'd considered. These were just rough, I was going to clean them up later, but I wanted to be able to physically feel and see the shape I was building. I wound up using ReadyBoard instead of XPS for the throne itself, I just find it easier to work with when you're at this tiny little scale. Once my pieces were cut, I did a lot of kind of just holding them in place, fiddling, how long did I want each piece, were they actually the right size, what did I need to tidy up to make them all fit snugly together. They were pretty loose when I first made them, the, uh, the back of the chair was too wide, so I had to trim that up. My original inspiration image, the chair had this grey trim that I kind of liked the idea of, so I got a sculpting tool and I went in and sort of pushed in a ridge along all of the kind of edges and I was toying with the idea of filling them with paint. I didn't wind up doing that but I still like the texture it gave to the piece. For the wood grain I use a fine tooth comb. I know a lot of people use a wire brush and that's great but I don't own a wire brush so the comb it is. So next I went back to the throne pieces and started gluing them together. I held them as I wanted them first and made sure that everything was kind of just so. And then I tried to figure out what the least obtrusive place to glue was. Just because hot glue can bead and, and really be obvious and show up, especially at this tiny scale. And I wound up going with underneath the seat, kind of right in the back corners by the arms. You want to hold your pieces pretty firmly until they're dry or your fit won't be tight. I started with a kebab skewer and shaved it thinner for the banner of the Crimson Fist tribe. I did this so that I could put a skull skewered on top, just like in the sample image. I just roughly went over it with some black paint to muddy it up a bit and keep the kind of dark and brooding vibe. I used good old construction paper to make the crest itself, making sure to keep the edges torn and rough and crumpling it up to keep it from looking too crisp before I painted on the Crimson Fist Tribe's crest. I made sure too to get the thin little streamers that hung out on either side because I just really liked the look. Next it was time to make the tusks that would be the accent pieces to the throne. So I drew out my design first on the edge of the foam and then just kind of cut out one side, turned it 90 degrees, drew on the next one and then cut that. It was a little tricky because of the curve on the second cut, but I found that if you just have a very steady hand, you keep your proxon on a low setting, it, uh, it comes away pretty good. You do wind up with a very squared tusk, but we're gonna fix that in a minute. I tried to make sure I had tusks that were taller, tusks that were shorter, just to kind of really give it a similar depth that the original rendering had. I did try to make sure though that all of the tusks would be taller than the throne because that's what it was in the rendering and I liked that effect, that sort of haloing of the, uh, of the seat of power. So our tusks are alarmingly square for tusks, so we're going to get our knife and take off the corners and the worst of the, the hard edges on these tusks and follow it up with some sandpaper to really rub them smooth and make them more natural seeming. Once our tusks are glued onto some basing material, we want to carve off the edges so that it's nice and natural looking. You want to add a little bit of a bevel with your knife so that it almost looks like it merges into the terrain or mat or whatever it is you're playing on. 
If your terrain bases are meant to be stone, ball up some tin foil and use it to press in a stone-like texture onto your bases. I did this for all the pieces except for the throne itself. Next it was time to get out our black Mod Podge and really start covering everything down. This of course gives it a little bit of hardness, a little bit of toughness, and also gives us a nice dark layer to paint over, which is great if you want to be a little bit lazy and not do another layer of paint as well. Once that's all dry, we can go in with our base colors. I started with just a very dark gray and a very dark brown and hit all of our terrain pieces. From there, it's just the dry brushing, of course, going over with our lighter layers. Um, as you can see on the left there, I finished the banner off. I just used super glue to affix the tiny skulls. Same with the throne. I added a few small skulls onto that to just give it a little bit more of a barbaric feeling. I'm pretty happy with how this build turned out. You'll note there are some braziers burning in, uh, in my final picks. They were built at the same time, but the footage was awful. So they're gonna get their own video with clearer footage showing exactly how to build them. If you wanna make sure you don't miss that, follow me on YouTube at Pibble Pusher, or visit my blog and join the mailing list at pibblepusher.ca. As always, happy crafting and thanks for watching.